Well, these are your energy stories for the second week of August 2022. I missed you last week. I was on vacation with limited internet in a cabin in northern Michigan, which is a good problem to have. Well, we're getting closer. Kristen Cinema offered critical support last week to the Inflation Reduction Act, which brings $369 billion in investments to combat climate change. The Senate voted to approve over this weekend, and now it goes to the Democratic-controlled House. I'll believe it when I see it, but it looks as if we'll finally see meaningful legislative action to address the biggest existential challenge of our time. Let's talk H2 for a few. New Fortress Energy and Plug Power plan to develop a 120 megawatt green hydrogen plant near Beaumont, Texas, yielding over 50 tons of green hydrogen per day. That plant may eventually be scaled to almost 500 megawatts. While sticking with hydrogen, New Fortress has also been involved in the Long Ridge Energy Project where they've successfully tested a new hydrogen methane blending process that will supply a 485 megawatt power plant in Hannibal, Ohio. This plant is the first to commercially use a GE H-class turbine, which is currently burning a 5% H2 mix and delivering energy to the grid. That hydrogen is being produced today as an industrial byproduct, but will soon need more produced from other resources. And many folks know about blue and green hydrogen, but what about turquoise? Portland, Oregon utility Northwest Natural announced plans to begin work with Seattle-based Modern Electron to begin producing hydrogen in a pilot facility using sustainable heat to split CH4 methane into its constituent hydrogen and carbon atoms in a pyrolysis project. Solid carbon results from this, and it can be converted into products such as asphalt, construction materials, automobile tires, and soil amendments. You don't need electricity or water for pyrolysis, but you do need super high heat in the 1,000 plus centigrade range. Stick with new tech. The small modular nuclear industry just cleared another hurdle with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission indicating it will approve nuclear reactor startup NuScale's 50 megawatt small modular nuclear reactor design. NuScale recently tweeted that it has, quote, 18 signed and active MOUs with potential customers in 11 countries. So this is starting to look a little bit more real. The first commercial installation in the United States is slated for 2029 at the U.S. Department of Energy's Idaho National Laboratory. Now let's talk electric vehicles. And first up, 17 states plus Washington, D.C. and Quebec agreed to an action plan to achieve 100% electric medium and heavy-duty vehicles, think trucks and buses, sales by 2050. Recommendations involve more charging infrastructure, a requirement for fleet owners to submit data concerning use of EVs, and state subsidies to help address cost differentials associated with EV purchases. And long-awaited news, as of July 21st, Amazon has now begun deliveries using its new Rivian electric delivery vehicle, the EDV, in cities such as Baltimore, Chicago, Nashville, and others. The plan is to deploy thousands of such vehicles to over 100 cities by year's end and 100,000 vehicles by 2030. Amazon has an 18% stake in Rivian with an investment exceeding $1.3 billion and had been testing deliveries with pre-production EDV since 2021. Chinese electric car maker NIO announced it will bring to market this winter its first vehicles with 150 kilowatt hour semi-solid state batteries, offering over 600 miles of range. Existing NIO customers can upgrade to this battery tech through NEO's battery swap stations. And the company we rely on will supply the cells, eventually providing full solid state batteries as well. And finally, the Midwest independent system operator, MISO's board approved a $10.3 billion transmission plan with 18 projects supporting development of up to 53,000 megawatts of wind, solar, batteries, and hybrid projects. With rapid coal plant retirements, resource adequacy has become a growing issue in the MISO region. And transmission will help, though these projects won't be commissioned until 2028 at the earliest. This issue of resource adequacy, having sufficient capacity to meet system requirements and loads, is only going to become more pressing in the years to come as utilities and grid operators face an increasingly challenging task of wringing carbon out of our power grids. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.